Hi, I'm Adrithi from HubSpot, and I'm here to talk all things workflows. Now, if you have a pro or enterprise HubSpot account, follow along with me. But if you're new to HubSpot, no worries. Simply sign up for HubSpot CRM and see if HubSpot's right for you. But for now, let's get to work. In your navigation, go over to Automations and select Workflows. Now here's your workflow dashboard. This is gonna be all of your workflows um, and you can even filter them by all of them, ones that are deleted, ones that Hub HubSpot has deemed uh, that needs a little bit of review and ones that aren't being used. So make sure to look at these uh, once you've created quite a few. But to start, let's go into the top right and click create workflow. Now you have two options here. You can either create workflows from scratch or from templates. If you're just starting out, I'd highly recommend looking at the templates to get inspiration from and see if there's any in there that you could quickly implement into your processes. For today though, we're gonna start with from scratch. Now on the left-hand side, you'll notice the HubSpot objects that can start a workflow. So we have contacts, companies, deals, etc. Now, in order to choose one, think of how you want your workflow to start. Is it based on a change in the contact property or is it based on if a deal moves to a certain stage? That'll tell you which one to start with. Now there are a couple caveats I wanna mention. Um, so while Workflows is for pro and enterprise users, there are a couple here that are specifically for a certain user. So ticket-based and feedback submission-based, these are only for Service Hub pro and enterprise users. And quote-based is only for our Sales Hub pro and enterprise users. For custom object reporting, only enterprise users have access to those. Now for today, I wanna to create a workflow that I think everyone should have, which is sending an email right after someone submits a form. So I'm gonna start with contact-based and I'm gonna start with a blank workflow. You can either start with a scheduled specific date or contact date property workflow. And these are more for if there is a specific date you're working around. Let's say there's a webinar that you want this workflow uh, to send emails for it, well, you can start it at a specific date so that it is targeted to that webinar. On the top right, click next. And the first thing that we should be doing here is giving the workflow a name. This is such an easy step to skip, but I highly encourage making sure every workflow has a name. So this is gonna be our form submission workflow and I'm just going to put one there and I'm going to save. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is set up my trigger. Now I want anyone who fills out a specific form to get an email from me. So I'm going to click when an event occurs. You can also make a workflow based on specific criteria um, for contact properties or even based on a schedule like every Monday at 8.30 a.m. I want to send an email to so-and-so. So I'm gonna click when an event occurs and the category will be form submission and I want it based on a specific form and name which is my new registration form. All right, make sure you click done and save. So right here it says, everyone who has completed this form will be enrolled in this workflow. Now I also wanna talk about re-enrollment. So right here it says contacts won't re-enroll into this workflow. What that means is if someone submits this form more than one time, they'll only be in this workflow once. But if I don't want that to happen, I want them to get an email every single time they submit the form, I can say yes, re-enroll every time the trigger occurs. But for now, I don't want that to happen. So everything looks good here. Now the next step is to add what I want to happen to these folks. So I wanna send a communication to them in the form of an email. I am going to set up the nurture to consideration email. HubSpot gives me a quick email preview. 
looks good to me. And I can also send it to only the enrolled contact or all contacts associated with the enrolled contact as well. Just wanna do that one contact for now. I'm gonna click save. And I could feasibly stop there and have a pretty robust workflow that's gonna help me out. However, this tool is pretty sophisticated, so let's see what else it can do. Let's click this plus button, and I'm actually gonna add a delay. So many times I get bombarded with emails right after I fill out a form, but I actually want to set a three-day delay between my first and second action. So I'm going to add a delay here. And then I also want to add an if then branch. If then branches make it easy for me to divide my contacts based on certain properties. So for this example, I want to divide my contacts based on where they live and that will determine their next steps. So I'm going to actually base it on a single property value and that value is going to be their country. I'm going to click next. Now my first branch, I want to, so now my first branch is going to be all folks in North America. And my second will be other. So what I'm essentially doing here is everyone who has filled out the form, I want to know if they are either in North America or anywhere else in the world. So I'm going to click save. And here it is. So now after three days, HubSpot is going to divide the folks up. And for people in North America, I actually want to send them another email. with this email. And for people not in North America, I actually wanna follow up with them via phone call. So I'm gonna create a task to call form submitters, and I'm going to assign the task to the owner of the contact. So now, People in North America will get another email three days later, and people who are not in North America will actually get a phone call from someone since we set up the task here. Something that I like to do before I'm done is actually make this screen a little smaller so I can see my workflow and make sure that it's exactly what I want. All right, so this looks good to me. I'm gonna pop over to settings and notifications. Now, there are two things that I can do here. I can set a specific time for actions to execute. So let's say I'm working only in North America time zones, I can make sure that all emails are sent within working hours, or I can just do it whenever I want. For now, I'm gonna say anytime. I can also add this to a specific marketing campaign so I can track and manage and report on these emails um, under that specific campaign. But this is gonna be a one-off, so I don't need that. Next up is goals. So you can actually set a goal to see how your workflow is performing against what your goal is. So for this specific goal, um, I want people to be able to book meetings. So under activity properties, I'm gonna say meeting outcome is any of scheduled. And once I apply that filter, I'll be able to see my goal and the percentage I am to my goal. In changes, I can just see a history of all the folks that have worked this workflow. All right, so I know that this can be intimidating, but don't worry, you can always test your workflow first. So enroll yourself in the workflow, make sure it works exactly as you want before you review and publish it. Now, if you go back to your workflow homepage, you can hover over your workflow, click more and select view details. Here you'll be able to see all of your contacts enrolled, enrollment over time, the contact performance, and other metrics associated with your goals.
If you're enjoying this workflow content, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Another thing I want to mention is just because you've published a workflow doesn't mean you can't go in there and change it if needed. You can always come in here, click edit actions and edit what you need to do. Now, something that I want to talk about is some small things that HubSpot does that actually make your life a lot easier when it comes to workflows. And the first is workflow alerts. So if you click into a workflow that's been running, on the top left, you'll notice an alerts button. If I click into this, I'll actually be able to see all of the mistakes or the errors that have happened in this workflow. So for example, there are a couple of times here where the WhatsApp message actually didn't go through. And if I wanna know more about it, I can click into this and I can see the exact reason for the error. So for this one, the contact doesn't have a WhatsApp phone number. That makes sense why HubSpot flagged it as an error. So to me, that's a signal that, hey, maybe this contact gave me a wrong number. I need to go back in there uh, and clean up my data a little bit. Next, if you hit settings and notifications, there are a couple of things that you can do here. One, you can set the time that the actions execute. So if you don't really mind the actions executing at any time, day or night, click anytime. However, if you are a little more mindful about that, you can click specific times and actually have it sent only Monday through Friday, nine to 5 p.m. And I do wanna note that this is already gonna be in their time zone. So nine to five in your customer's time zone. Something that I also love HubSpot does is allows you to keep in mind upcoming dates that you don't want any communications to happen. So let's say a holiday is coming up Great, you know no one's gonna be at their computer, so you can add in a date that you don't want any communications going out. Everything scheduled for the 25th of December, for example, will then be sent on the 26th of December. Next up, let's talk about unenrollment and suppression. So the first thing is, do you want your contacts to be removed from other workflows when they are enrolled in your workflow? So we can actually say, nope, I, they can be enrolled in as many workflows as they want, or you can say, remove them from everything else, or let's just remove them from this one workflow. So really make sure that you're working with everyone else on your team who is also creating workflows to make sure that they are working with one another. The next is figuring out what to do when a contact no longer meets the enrollment conditions. So let's say you are enrolling everyone in a particular city in this workflow. Well, what happens when that contact moves and they're no longer part of that city? Do you still want them to be part of this workflow or do we need to unenroll them? And then finally, you have some uh, decision-making here to do about when two contacts are merged, whether the newly created contact enrolled in this workflow should trigger another criteria. Finally, you have a suppression list. And this suppression list basically says, if you're part of this list, even if you do meet all of the criteria for getting in this workflow, you are not going to be enrolled in this workflow. So in order to get the lists here, make sure you create a list in your marketing account. So the next thing that I want to talk about is notifications. Now you can send notifications to specific people or specific teams within HubSpot. Just want to reiterate all of these notifications are internal only. So one, you can send notifications when the workflow moves into the needs review category. Now workflows will move into this category when there's just a lot of alerts going on. Uh, you can tell that something's not right. They'll move into the needs review category and then certain people will get notified. I highly recommend turning this on uh, just to make sure that you don't necessarily have to go in every single time, um, but HubSpot will send you a notification saying, hey, check this out. The other thing that you can set notifications up for is when workflows enrollment changes. So let's say something's changed in the workflow. Uh, you wanna make sure that the workflow owner is aware of that. Whenever you create a workflow, you obviously have a goal behind it. Maybe it's getting meetings scheduled. Maybe it's having folks complete a form. Whatever it is, you wanna make sure you're tracking that goal and making sure your workflow is doing the work for you. So here you can click view or edit goal. And right here you can set up filters. So I can say, I want my goal to be that meeting booked is any of schedules. 
or any of reschedules. I'm gonna click update filter and save. And now once people start going through my workflow, once they start booking meetings, I can see what percentage of my contacts are actually booking meetings for me. I can also see it month over month to know if I'm doing something differently in a month or what's causing that spike. So just a really good way to make sure that your workflow is doing what it needs to do. Finally, if I go over to changes, I will be able to see all of the changes that anyone has made and the timestamp. So just to make sure that we're keeping track of what's changing, who's changing it and when. Now you want to make sure you test your workflow before you review and publish your workflow. Workflows are a big deal and there are a lot of little errors that can occur, especially the more complicated you make your workflow. So I would highly recommend clicking this test button and you can preview it for any contact. So I'm going to preview it for Edna Frank. And I'm actually gonna send myself the HubSpot emails that Edna would receive. So if I click test, I'll actually be sent the WhatsApp message, be added to this list, and I'll go through all of this. Now, again, testing is just for yourself. So even if you click test, you're the only person who's gonna get that message, no one else will. So this is a really great way to make sure that there are no typos in any of the messages, they're executing at the right time, they make sense um, one after the other. So please, 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 if you get nothing from this video, make sure that you test your workflow before you actually click review and publish. When you click review and publish, go through everything that we just talked about. So who's enrolled, what the workflow actually looks like, how you get folks unenrolled, the timing, the notifications. Again, you just wanna make sure that this looks perfect before you click turn on. Now, that was just one example of how to use a workflow, but there are so many other use cases. For instance, for marketing use cases, you can send an email series when a form is submitted, what we just did. You can also send welcome emails to new customers or subscribers, or send re-engagement emails to cold leads. For sales, you can use workflows for lead assignments or lead status or life cycle stage updates, or my favorite deal stage automation. So when a deal stage reaches a certain stage, maybe there's a task that goes to a sales rep. For service, there are a couple things we can do here as well. We can set up ticket reminders if an SLA is coming up, or we can even make the sales to service handoff a lot smoother. So maybe when a deal closes, we can alert the customer success manager to start working this customer. Now, if you're looking for more technical workflows, we have you covered with Operations Hub. So you can create workflows based on custom code actions. So you can write code in a HubSpot workflow action. And really the use cases here are unlimited. You can also format data actions. So there's also a ton of applications here, but by formatting actions, it basically helps you edit property data as a record passes through a workflow. And for webhooks, you can send packets of record data to external systems when a record goes through a workflow. And finally, one of the best parts about workflows is that you can also integrate Integrate it with some of our partners such as Zoom, Slack, or Asana. So it's not just completely HubSpot based. Now you guys know I love HubSpot, but don't just take my word for it. G2 has recently crowned us as leaders in the mid-market and enterprise spaces. So if you have pro and enterprise, get started with workflows today. And if you don't, sign up for our HubSpot CRM today.